So the homo and the hetero doesn't actually refer to the atoms in the bond. For example, this homosexual couple can undergo homolytic fission, but they can also undergo heterolytic fission. So it's the actual bond itself and how it breaks governs if it's hetero or homo. If the bond breaks in half and one electron goes to each of the atoms, either side of the bond, it's homolytic fission. But if the bond breaks and both electrons go to one atom and none to the other from the bond, that's heterolytic fission. Now the homo and hetero does not refer to the atoms in the bond, it refers to the bond itself. So let's first of all have a look at a heterolytic. Now these are both heterolytic. Even though the atoms are the same here, don't think that this is a homolytic process. It's not the atoms, it's the bond that governs if it's hetero or homo. So using curly arrows, the two electrons in the bond are going towards the right-hand atom in both cases. So how does this end up negative? Well, let's look at x, y. Originally, this electron here belong to the Y and, and that one belonged to the X. But both of them have moved over to the Y. That's what this curly arrow means. And so the Y has got its own electron back plus one of the X's, leaving Y negative and therefore X positive. It's the same split, if you will. Now, to show the movement of one electron, you use a fish hook arrow. I missed. How could I miss? Jeez. Come on, Thornley. Use a fish hook arrow showing the movement of one electron. So, what is this dot? This dot is the radical. And what is a radical? Well, it's a lone electron. And that makes these especially reactive because lone electrons are unstable. They want to pair up. Paradoxically, uh, electrons like to go together in pairs. Now that seems a bit strange that a negative would like to go to a negative. Surely they repel. Surely electrons would be happy on their own like they are here. Uh, no, we say they spin up, spin down. And if they spin up and spin down, then they tend to pair together. So when you halogenate an alkane, you remember that's initiation, propagation, termination. The first step is where the chlorine is zapped with ultraviolet light and it splits in homolytic fission. This electron goes back to that chlorine and that electron goes back to that chlorine. Now I'll give it in a little more detail than the IB would normally want, just to emphasise the point. So chlorine now has seven electrons and seven, so it's super reactive. It needs one more to be stable. And we don't tend to write it like that. As I said before, we tend to write it with the dot to show the radical. So if you're going to add hydrogen bromide to an alkene, what happens is the electrons in the bond between the hydrogen and the bromine are attracted towards the more electronegative bromine. And that turns into Br minus. And then the electrons in the pi will steal that hydrogen. So this here is heterolytic fission because the electron pair is not split in the same direction, in the same way. It just goes over to one side. And if you recall, this is the electrophilic addition of a hydrogen halide to an alkene. Wow.